As always, there's a couple of seats in the front, a couple of rows. <laughs> For the students, anybody who sits in the front row to get A's. <laughs> Okay, well, we're going to get started uh, this afternoon. Thank you all for uh, joining us. Um, we particularly thank the students who are with us. I know some of you are going to have to leave to get to class, but that's real important going to class. So um, we'll uh, feed you a little bit and give you a little energy and nutrition to keep you going for the rest of the afternoon. Um, so we're here really to just sort of get a sense of where the college is and where we're going, um, hence the state of the college. Uh, so here we go. Uh, this is uh, what we're going to do this year, uh, 2015. It's always exciting to start a new year. You know, that New Year's Eve, you kind of reflect and you say, what are you going to do in the future and get some big plans uh, for the future. So that's what we're going to do today is kind of look at where we are and then see where we're going. Uh, and that will be exciting. Of course, students, all of students, raise your hand. Uh, great. Uh, there, why we're here, there are raison d'etre. And um, just to, these are a little, a little dim, but. Um, Jocelyn, who I know, she sits out at the switch, switchboard uh, periodically. Be sure if you have not met her yet that you meet her coming in. Uh, she's uh, from New York, uh, grad, going to graduate in 2018. Uh, she's a hotel, hospitality and event management uh, student looking to get an internship uh, pretty soon. So one of our students, uh, another one of our students, uh, uh, and I, as I said, I know Jocelyn from the switchboard, um, and I know the next student here, Aurora West, uh, because she works up in uh, the office with Stacy, and she's been doing some blogging, and she's quite a, an amazing young woman. She's from Washington, the state of, and she's doing what Burlington College is known for, and that is a flexible major, make your own. Uh, so she's making her own, uh, and part of her own is the media activism program. So, um, as I said, there's other students here that we won't talk about uh, today, but uh, get a chance to meet them all. The faculty here probably know them all, um, and they're all amazing young people and have amazing stories. So, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to build on the history of Burlington College. You folks have been around for 40 plus years. Not a small thing. Uh, you built some phenomenal programs educationally. Uh, you do a lot of flexible kinds of education, uh, a lot of experiential education, which I am a big believer in, and so is the rest of the world, by the way. They just don't do it. Uh, so this is what we're going to build on, what you folks have created over the last 40 plus years. Um, so let's see where we are. Uh, the land sale, we're going to talk about uh, a little bit on the land sale. Uh, Mia, see where we are with uh, our creditors, uh, spring enrollment, and space. Always an interesting topic. Uh, so, first, uh, the land sale. Uh, we've completed that thanks to the incredible work of lots and lots of people, certainly uh, Mike Smith and David Coates, uh, the board championed um, by Eves. Uh, lots and lots of people, and of course, Coral Leaf Homes. Uh, phenomenal job in getting everybody connected and pulling this all together. And our lawyers who aren't here today, they're on vacation, it wore them out. Uh, so, anyway, uh, we've reduced our debt, not an insignificant amount. Uh, we are also um, looking at budget reductions, and we'll see those. Uh, debt service has been significantly reduced, our property taxes significantly reduced. And just the general maintenance of that property um, has been uh, reduced for us. So we're, we're looking at a much um, happier budget, if you will, uh, and our accounts payable are being um, cleared so as we speak. 
so we'll be in um, a very sound position financially. Um, and let me just quote one thing here. I don't want to miss this quote. Um, when I called Barbara Brittingham, a lot of the students don't know who she is. Um, she happens to be the CEO of the NEAS uh, Commission on Accreditation. Um, she said to me, Carol, thanks for sharing the good news and congratulations. So uh, I think an affirmation uh, from the head of, of NEAS. But here's where we are. Um, <clears throat> Hospitality and events management report went in a day early, which is nice. Uh, we're, we've restructured the program. We've created an advisory board of some terrific folks in the area in the hospitality arena. Uh, and this program is going to fly for us. I know it. Um, the advisory board members are very excited about it. We have one of our own trustees who's going to help us out be, and be excited about it and this is going to be a, a terrific program for the college. Um, the financial report is due on February 13th uh, and that's in the works thanks to um, Gibson and others who are helping and certainly my partner Mark Hilton who's out drinking soda. Uh, so thank you both for all of that, um, and it's going to be another happy report, shall we say. Um, we like financial happiness, that's a good thing. Uh, our student completion report, um, thanks to the department chairs, we'll get that in uh, again a little bit early uh, and be in much better stead with, um, with, with NEASC, that's uh, for sure. Uh, so, based on our last financial report and their January meeting, um, they have told us the phenomenal news <laughs> that we do not have to report to them in March. Now, you're saying, eh, was that a big deal? What the heck? Well, it, it is a huge deal. Um, these are people that like reports. Um, and if you're a little bit uh, uneasy or a little bit in the heat of the moment, they like a lot more reports. Um, but again, based on our previous financial uh, report to them that went in in, in January, uh, well, December, I guess, and the land sale uh, news, they said, you don't need to report again. Well, thank you very much. It's one less report we have to do. Uh, so moving on. Um, so we're, we're kind of me-ask free, if you will. Not that they're the bad guys, they're the good guys, but still, uh, all these reports does, uh, does wear you out a little bit. Um, but our next report is a routine uh, report and ultimate a visit. Um, so in August, we'll be sending them a comprehensive report that we will be pitching in to put together and we'll have a site visit. You know, we'll have some of our colleagues from other colleges coming in in the fall uh, to visit, usually October. So that'll be a, a great time to show off all the things that are positive and going well at the college and the strength of the college um, by that time in the fall. So, you know, as soon as we know the dates, uh, I certainly will broadcast them, lock them in on your calendars, particularly students, because. We want to put our very best foot forward, and I know we will, and our best foot are our students. Um, they're amazing, and they're doing amazing things. So that's an um, update on Mia. Uh, spring enrollment, um, here we go again, um, Jocelyn. Uh, and we budgeted conservatively for the spring. Um, I might be a social liberal, but fiscally, I'm very conservative. So we budgeted at 145 FTEs, have a nice balanced budget at that point. Uh, our actual FTEs, will, as of the end of it, dropped as of, I guess, last night, is 164. So this is good. This is a good budget model, and we will continue to be fiscally conservative. Okay, uh, space. You all have seen the new space in admissions. Um, and. We created this new space uh, with the cooperation, certainly, of Matt and, and film students. Um, but it was important to move admissions right to the front of the college. So when people come in, they see you know, a spectacular design and open 
lighted space, and there are the admissions folks talking to potential new students. And that's what we want. We want to have the admissions people right out front uh, telling potential students what a great place it is to come to uh, Burlington College. And there are some other space changes that will be <coughs> happening. Had a friend of mine come in this morning, in the stealth of the morning, 7.30, um, to give us some pro bono advice on a couple of spaces, not the least, of, well, no, not going to mention that. Uh, so, it's coming, <laughs> some new spaces, some new spaces, so stay tuned. Um, that's all I'm going to say about that. Um, so, um, this is where we're going, March through August. We're going to build on our Hallmark programs. We, we're establishing growth targets, and we have, I'll show you in a minute. We're going to look to um, the Student Success Task Force is going to be working on these two points here. Now, we're not, not going to accomplish that right now this year, but we certainly will next year. Um, invest in our academic programs um, and invest in our students. So let's take a look. Um, some of our hallmark programs um, that you all created in your infinite wisdom, uh, design your own major. Now, if you look at Generation Z profile, you will see that Generation Z likes to be independent, entrepreneurial, and kind of do their own thing. So, perfect for where we are. Um, and my friend here is nodding, yes, this is true, that's true. Okay, okay. Um, the Woodworking School has been a tremendous asset to the college. They do just superb work, um, and we want to continue to bring them closer and closer. Now, they're as close as you can get, um, not geographically, but um, they're close to us. They earn our credits, they're under our accreditation, um, their staff is our staff, but we want to get the, the whole thing um, moved. Um, individualized master's degrees, again, following in the strength and the history of the college uh, to, to do this. This is a program that has um, extraordinary potential for the college because this is what adults want. They want convenient, they want to do their own thing, they don't want to be boxed in with a list of courses that they have to kind of check off. Um, they want to do their own thing, and they want to do it when they want to do it and when they can do it, because they're busy people. Um, and so here we are at the, the head of the game again. Um, our Cuba programs, again, I mean, Cuba is exploding. Uh, you have a history with this program. It's a phenomenal program. It gives our students and other people in the community a great of view and insights um, into uh, Cuba and get a flavor of the culture and what, what's going on there. This has tremendous potential and we're gonna grow this, this program. Um, so, um, in terms of admissions targets, um, these are internal targets. So, this is for us. Um, we're looking at 65 new students and 35 transfer students um, and 10 new graduate students. So those are our targets. We're, we're a little bit aggressive internally as opposed to, um, you know, a little stretch, but we're going to budget conservatively. Um, but these are our targets, and in order to get there, we need to have 350 applications so that when the applications turn into deposits and enrollments, you know, there's a formula, uh, and then we'll, we'll reach our goal. So remember that everybody is an admissions counselor. Everybody, including the students, talk to your friends, tell them what a great time they're having. So when you're walking the hallway, as I happen to do this morning, um, and you meet somebody coming in that you don't recognize, well, new student and her father. So say hello, welcome them to the college, say something that you know is terrific about the college, you're an admissions counselor for that five minutes. So help us out, um, Galen and his team need a lot of help, they're doing a phenomenal job, but everybody works for admissions. Okay, 
Got it. Moving on. Invest in our academic programs. I mean, this is the, you know, the heart of the college. This is what we offer to students, and students say, yes, I want to do that, and they come to Burlington College. So we're going to be reviewing all of our academic programs. Uh, we're going to be developing specific plans to enhance the quality and the offerings of each of our academic programs. We're going to be uh, establishing advisory boards for many of our programs. Um, as I mentioned, we have established one that we'll add to for the hospitality program. Um, but usually, you know, when I sort of have sent out a, a message to say, let's get some advisory boards, because we get great advice, we get friends, we get internships, all kinds of things from advisory boards. Uh, usually it's the professional programs who jump to this. But yesterday, Nora came in and talked to me about an advisory board for the general education program. And she's got some phenomenal ideas, and I had one or two to pitch in, so we're going to be doing this routinely uh, and bring more friends to the college, bring more good advice to the college, advice right from the field. Um, and our software. Not going to happen tomorrow, but we'll have a plan, we'll have some timelines, and we'll get it done. Um, we also want to invest in our student services. And so uh, Greg and Amanda are kind of planning on, on some of this. We're going to track our graduates. They've got a survey to go out to recent graduates to find out where they are, what they're doing. You know, find out their story, because I'm sure it's an exciting one, and we should know about it. Um, Amanda has already risen to the occasion of the challenge of actually developing career services. Um, you see the posters out there on the bulletin boards of a number of workshops that she's going to be offering. So um, this is a terrific start to um, helping our students plan for a career and get themselves ready for it. We'll be doing, you know, uh, mock interviews and actually um, not mock interviews is an old-fashioned term. What we're going to be doing is speed interviewing. How many people know what that is? <laughs> okay, we got, we got some people. Well, basically what we're going to do is invite employers in and we're going to have our students sign up and they're going to come, of course, dressed in the appropriate attire uh, with all their good stuff in hand uh, and they're going to sit for um, seven minutes with employers that they want to talk with. And in seven minutes, the employer is going to interview you, and you're going to get a lot of tips on what to say, what not to say, how to look, how not to look, etc. Uh, so we'll stay tuned. We'll be doing some of that. Uh, peer mentoring, we're going to get some uh, students to mentor our new incoming students. Uh, there's nothing like peer to peer mentoring. You know, you get the the straight skivvy, so to speak, from your peers. So we're going to get that going. Um, we're going to establish the Burlington College Service Corps. We're going to be asking students to give to their institution, give their time, give their energy, their creativity um, by signing up and you know maybe doing some peer mentoring or some career services kinds of things or just a whole series of things that are possible for students to do. And look at how we can enhance um, our general activities for, for students. <coughs> so let me just take a sip here of water. Uh, infrastructure improvements. We're going to become data driven. Um, it's probably my biology background, but you know, data, data, data. I like data, and it works. If you make data based decisions, usually on the right track. So uh, this is not going to happen in six months. Um, uh, or Jordan will fall right off his chair. Well, you're not sitting, but fall. Um, but it, it's going to happen. And we're going to get the right reports, the right data. It's going to be clean data. And we're going to have those reports for offices regularly to make decisions and um, set the college on, on a path to knowing where it is at all moments of the day and being able to make decisions uh, accordingly. 
um, and, and improve our record keeping. Now, you know, there's been some logistics here, and you all know about it. And we have some new people in some new places. Um, and so one of the things that is high on my list is professional development for everybody. Um, but in particular, we want to have those people who got plunked into a particular role uh, without a, a whole lot of background. So people like Joanna and Megan and Amanda and we're, we're going to do some more with lots of other people and certainly our faculty. Um, mm -hmm. We already have this week, Joanna is off to Washington, D.C. for a week-long conference to learn about financial aid. Um, and we're going to be getting Megan on the circuit here pretty soon um, and Amanda as well and lots of other people. It's critical to the growth and the long-term sustainability of the institution. You're the people that are going to sustain this organization, and you have to keep current with what's going on, because higher ed is not the sort of ivory tower, low, uh, slow-paced kind of organization that we remember way back when. Uh, it's moving fast, 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 and faster, so we need to keep up. Um, <clears throat> some organizational improvements. Um, our handbooks are at a date, and they're um, not quite focused uh, as well as they should be, so we already have a, a committee on faculty handbook. We'll do the staff handbook as well. Um, Greg is taking up the lead on getting a student handbook. Um, we're going to be working with our adjunct faculty uh, and their union to develop a contract and a handbook update for them. Um, we're going to be looking at revising our governance structures something that's a, a thread in our history with NEAS, and we're just going to do it. It's not that hard. We're smart people. We can figure this out. Um, and board development. Again, we've got some new folks on the board. The board has gone through you know, a tremendous um, period of time, along with all of you, in this land sale process, and uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we, we need to now look to the future. We need to put some systems in place, and, and we need some um, professional development for everybody. So we'll be doing that as well. Um, partnerships, uh, it's the way of the future. Uh, you can't do everything for all people, but you can partner to broaden your portfolio of offerings to lots and lots of students and friends and, and other folks. So these are just some of the, the um, partnerships that we're working on at this moment in time. Um, as you can see, both of these are all around the hospitality program, um, making some inroads with um, CCB and, uh, and the other colleges in our backyard. Uh, it only makes sense to share resources and not duplicate uh, what we're doing. So those are some. Friend raising, uh, we're going to start doing uh, a lot of that. And this is another thing that should be on everybody's dance card. Um, this is everybody's job, to raise friends for the college. Friends that will support us in a whole variety of ways. Um, the advisory boards being you know, one example that those folks can give us internships, they can give us equipment, they can do all kinds of things for us. And so we're going to be raising friends through partnerships and advisory boards, and Coralie um, has a, a, Dana, did you have a question? No. Okay. Um, it has a plan, you know, we, we've got to turn the public opinion around, no surprise. You know, you haven't had good press for the last several months. Um, we, we've got to now get the stories out. We've got to tell the stories about our students that are just fabulous. And what we're doing here, which is on the cutting edge, in fact, it's a little head of the cutting edge, which I'll say more about in a minute, so we've got to get these stories out. So, you know, we need to know the stories, um, so if you have one, please share. Um, and when, when you see folks downtown or in a coffee shop or a restaurant or, or a Flynn Theater, you know, say, hey, did you know the latest and greatest from Burlington College? You know, it's everybody's job. Okay. Um, the annual <coughs> fund campaign, uh, we're really not doing uh, a, a capital campaign. We're doing an annual fund campaign. So um, we have committed in writing somewhere 
uh, that we were going to raise $250,000. Uh, we haven't raised that much. And it's late into the season. Hey, have a good class, folks. Thank Study you. hard. <laughs> but we, we're going to go for it. We're going to try and reach that goal in the remaining months of the year. So we've got giving already. And we have about, what, 40,000 quarterly. We've got um, lots of volunteers who have given of their time, which is great. Uh, so we're going to be using that. Um, and we want to launch that annual fund campaign today. Um, so far, that's where we are. And we're asking faculty and staff to support their institution, to put their money in the institution where you can demonstrate your faith in the sustainability of the institution. And to start that off, I'm going to make my pledge today. It's going to be a matching pledge, and I will match any faculty and staff gift up to $1,000. So reach into your pocket. Um, this is a good institution. We also have um, a lot of donors out there that we will recultivate and bring into our fold and tell them the good news story of the future. And they will give because this is a worthwhile institution. Very worthwhile to give to. So that's the plan for the next few months. So let me just stop for a moment. Um, just kind of think about some of these trends in higher education. Do you want to just oh, tip them on? Um, <laughs> these are not all the trends, to be sure, but there are a few that I picked out because they just seem relevant to our future. Um, you know, the 18-year-old population is decreasing. Everybody knows that, particularly in the Northeast. Um, Generation Z, again, those are the young people that we're seeing come to college today. And as my friend will affirm, they're independent thinkers. They want to be independent. They want to do things for themselves. They want the flexibility to do those kinds of things. And they're entrepreneurs. You know, they don't see themselves going into the cubicle in the corporate office. They're going to do their own thing and make it profitable. So uh, more flexible programs, more flexible times in delivery, partners, God bless you, new business models. Um, decreasing costs, no big surprise there, convenience. The ten, uh, top ten list just came out from employers, and, and these are some of the skills. They want students to be independent learners. They want them to be able to go out and search and research and find out. Um, they want students who have good communication skills, um, good quantitative skills. I mean, again, Teamwork, they want students to be able to work in teams because that's where it's at these days. And they want students that have experience. So, I mean, there you go, folks. Uh, you know, pick, up, pick them off the top 10 list and we've got it. So, why wouldn't a student come here? Okay? Um, independent learners and effective team skills. So, um, you already have it. You've had it for a number of years. We just have to get it out there and ensure that the Generation Z folks and other folks um, know what's going on here because you're right on the cutting edge of where things are going. You're out ahead. In fact, um, Mark Hilton, who's I will ask to come in, he's been telling me now for several weeks that the Burlington College graduate is about two years ahead of the graduate of other colleges, right? Absolutely. So that translates into Money. Marketability. Yeah. Marketability and a long career with a comfortable financial life. Right? Okay. Um, so where are we going after August? Well, um, I'd like to share with you um, an idea. It's, it's a phrase that I've heard once and once only from one person. Um, but I thought it was a dynamite concept, and I've been waiting to use it. So here we go. I'm going to use it. Um, we're going to become Burlington College.
become university. We're going to partner with other colleges and universities and tech centers and high schools and you name it, institutes. Um, and we're going to put together offerings through this campus that are going to be quite diverse, uh, reach all kinds of individuals under the umbrella of what we do here. Um, so we are going to partner with tech centers, partnering with a couple of these other colleges here, but the sky is the limit. Um, just actually through Sandia, well, Strat oh, there's mm -hmm. um, got another institute today that wants to reestablish conversation on partnering. Um, this is the way to go, folks, and this is what you can do. And you can have the core of your student population in the Burlington College model, but in the Burlington College models, you can reach out and partner and bring lots of other students to not necessarily your campus, but bring them under the umbrella of Burlington College and serve these populations well, influence how they get served, and spread your wings. So that's where we're going to go. You're already there. You just have to get the partners lined up. You already have dynamic programs. Make your own programs. Experience. Experience. And more experience. So you're there. You just have to package it, get the partners, and tell the world. <coughs> Easy, right? <laughs> sure. OK, so before you all um, leave, we're going to um, uh, Coralie and John and Eric and anybody else who's out there has a little treat for the end of the meeting. Um, don't forget to pick up your bookmarks before you go because these bookmarks have the Burlington College difference on them. Sparkle cider, so we're not going to check IDs. <laughs> but, so don't forget to pick those up and if you don't know the uh, five or six bullet points about Burlington College, memorize them and speak more frequently. Yeah, we changed John into the mayor here. No, no, I can't know. Oh, that's not a bad thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Some of us. Me, too. <laughs> so, uh, when everybody gets a glass, we'll have a little sparkling cider toast to the future. <laughs> Mark. John, Eric, Mun, part of the team. Thank you, Zelda. Yeah. Right, right. Okay. But it fell apart. So if you first tell, I will try not to spend all five. Yeah, the servers get an extra glass. So here's to Burlington College's future. It is a rich and expansive future. Here, 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 here. Here, here. Mm. And the cider was frozen in my car, so it's <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to offer a toast before you leave to Dr. Brewer, because I must say, as the chair of the board, you know, we have an amazing